Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. I'm Shannon, and today on the show, we're taking a look at I Ripper by Stephen Hunter, New York Times bestselling author of The Third Bullet. Uh, this is a fictional account of the Jack the Ripper Whitechapel murders uh, with historical accuracy. Uh, here's the back. Uh, a couple of... Um, Reviews on it, a rip, 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 roaring novel from Stephen Hunter, a real killer of a writer. Uh, Hunter passes almost everybody else in the thriller writing trade as if they were standing still. Worth very extravagant rave. A master storyteller. I'm a fanatical reader of thrillers and Stephen Hunter has always been one of my favorites. Few authors of any genre write with such swagger and verb. Verb, sorry. Here's the side. Uh, and then, usually when I read a book, I'll take the, uh, I'll take the cover off because it just gets in the way. There it is without the cover. Some very nice blood red lettering uh, pushed into the spine. Very nice. And then here we have on the cover, on the sleeve, uh, about the book. I'll go ahead and hold it right there. If you guys want, you can pause it and read it. Okay. Um, the pressing of the title, very nice. And obviously make it out on the opposite side and about the oh, oh. about the author let you guys pause that real quick all right let's go ahead and put that cover back on as it just looks nicer uh the only time i really take the covers off like like it's uh, is when I'm reading it, just because it gets in the way. Have to worry about it flopping around and things while I'm reading the book, and that just gets aggravating. Uh, I will say, it's a pretty good read. It wants to be a Sherlock Holmes novel, but ends up being a Jekyll and Hyde piece. A twist ending that some may see coming, but others may not. Author Stephen Hunter gets the majority of the historical facts correct, but tends to exaggerate a bit for dramatic flair. He takes some liberties, obviously, with the identity of Jack the Ripper, since he was never officially caught, but the liberties he takes are so believable and make sense that you can't help but wonder if his Jack the Ripper may actually be the real deal. When you begin reading the book, there are three different perspectives at first. That of Jack, that of the reporter following the Whitechapel murders, and that of a female writing letters to her mother. It's mildly confusing until you get used to it. As a longtime fan of Sherlock Holmes, I got immediately that the reporter's part of the novel was trying to read as if written by Dr. Watson, with the constant references to A Study in Scarlet, which came out a year before the Whitechapel murders began. Through the Ripper's diary entries, we dip into his mentality and what drives him, or at the very least, what the author wants us to believe drives him. It isn't till the last, the very last two chapters that I Ripper begins to play like an M. Night Shyamalan movie, at least one of his earlier movies, before he began losing his touch with what made his film so great. In the final chapter, I was called back to films like The Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, and The Village, some of Shyamalan's best work, where the book leads you in one direction, but at the very end, a twist sends you back to the beginning to confirm that the author wasn't trying to pull one past you for an easy ending. Research was done to complete the story to historical accuracy. As a longtime ripperologist myself, I feel this is the most plausible account of who Jack the Ripper actually was. Very good read and give it a three and a half out of five stars. Had I not been so accustomed to twist endings, 
I would have probably been far more surprised by the big reveal and would have given Eye Ripper a far higher rank. If you enjoy murder mysteries in the vein of Sherlock Holmes novels and twist endings like M. Night Shyamalan's earlier work, then you'll certainly enjoy this book. Um, <clears throat> the chapters are very light. Uh, there's a lot of chapters in this book because each chapter does not take up that many pages. Let's see. Let's quote at the beginning. And we start off with a diary entry, uh, Jack the Ripper's Diary. Uh, I will not tell you who the Ripper is in this book, uh, in case you want to read it. But there's the first chapter right there. That's it. And then it goes into Jeb's memoirs. Um, and then... That's Jeb's memoirs, and then the diary entry, or more from the diary entry, and then eventually you get to a letter that's written by a female. Uh, let's see, where's it at? And they do it on and off throughout the book. Adding the, di uh, the, here we go. Just like right here. And if you're into Jack the Ripper and you know about his murders, uh, his victims, you would be correct in guessing who the letters are from when you see the name. Um, I guessed it right off the bat. It wasn't that difficult to guess. Uh, Stephen does include a bibliography at the end to show you all the research he put into uh, getting this book historically accurate. As I said, he did take a few liberties uh, just for dramatic effect. But very, very, very well written, very well researched. Um, I mean, I'm astonished at how much research went into this book. Uh, there's the acknowledgments at the end. about the author um, like I said it's slightly confusing he does write since it's done in the perspective uh, mainly of Jack the Ripper and of the reporter following the uh, case it the terminology used in the book um, is very late 19th century uh, there's a lot of slang terms in there uh, that were only used during that period of time. Uh, a lot of references that were only only make sense during that period of time. Uh, but as I said, it it wants to be a Sherlock Holmes novel, but ends up turning into an M Night Shyamalan inspired book. Uh, like I said, I'll give it three and a half out of five stars only because I saw the ending coming uh, because I'm so familiar with Sherlock Holmes and M. Night Shyamalan uh, that I knew what was coming, uh, but it surprised me how thorough uh, Stephen Hunter was in getting to that. Uh, and he didn't take any liberties with that like you could go back and read it again and acknowledge that yes that's he he could have done it that way um it, it makes sense uh who the who jack the ripper actually is in this book anyway uh like i said uh, 
though the names may have been changed or whatever, I'm not that well versed into the reporters for the case, but I do believe the names were kept the same for the most part. Um, and side characters and whatnot. Uh, but really good read if you're into Jack the Ripper. If you're into murder mysteries, uh, if you're into the early works of M. Night Shyamalan, and if you just love a good mystery, pick up I Ripper. Very good read. I got it at Barnes & Noble. It was on sale. Uh, I think I paid like $5 for it. Can't beat it. I could not put it down. Really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, uh, head on out to Barnes and Noble or pick, uh, go to on Amazon Prime or Amazon. Get you a copy. It'll be worth it. Believe me. That's it for today, guys. Take care. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you can stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, make sure you check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Comic Getting TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.